the Let's Master English podcast, and I'm your host, Goat Shane. Hello, everybody. It's time for another Let's Master English podcast, where I am here talking with you. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer some of your questions. We'll talk about some stuff in the news and anything else that is interesting, and then we're going to listen to some music, and that's what's going to happen right now. This is a fantastic song from a long time ago, from the 1990s. Do you remember the 1990s? This is Naughty by Nature. Naughty by Nature. I think their biggest song was, You Down with OPP? But we're going to listen to Everything's Gonna Be All Right. Enjoy it. I'll be right back. Copyright Restricted. Very nice song. I like that song. Today, guys, one of the stories I wanted to talk about today was not too long ago, a very famous American. Actually, he's Canadian, but everybody in America knows him. Well, he died. He was a television, I guess we could say a star. He was the host of a very popular TV game show called Jeopardy. That's music from the game show Jeopardy. And his name was Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek, uh, he was 80 years old. I think that was his age, right? 80 years old. And uh, he just recently passed. He passed away. He died He's no longer with us in this plane. He's gone to heaven or wherever it is that he goes, uh, that he went. uh, He is there. He's not with us anymore. But uh, he was a a really popular man. And he was in our homes every night for years and years and years. Alex Trebek did a game show called Jeopardy! Every evening, Monday through Friday, Jeopardy was on TV, and so many Americans watched it. We loved it. It's one of those really cool, uh, you know, uh, shows. It's one of those really cool shows that you can sit at home with the family. Alex Trebek, he reads questions, and then everybody else can can answer, give try to answer those questions. But the game show Jeopardy was actually really tough. That was a tough, tough quiz show. Uh, Even for me, and I'm a genius, some of the answers, many of the answers, uh, I didn't know. But what's interesting about Alex Trebek and the game show Jeopardy is that millions, well, I don't know about millions, but thousands upon thousands of first generation Americans and their families learned English from Alex Trebek and the show Jeopardy. That's right. Lots of families who immigrated to the United States from all different countries. You know, TV is something that we all watch. They would watch (laughs) Jeopardy. Some of the questions were easy, make the whole family happy. Some were difficult, but the variety of question, the subjects, they talked about everything. And they learned English from Alex Trebek. And this is so cool. It's something that's really, really cool. And it's perfect for this year because in December, around my birthday, maybe on Christmas, maybe right after Christmas, I'm not really sure, For my DDM students, especially DDM VIP, but any of my my students, any of my students, I will be hosting a quiz show. I'm really excited. Uh, I have to uh, get prizes together. I haven't decided what kind of prizes I'm going to have. If you're not uh, one of our students, I'm sorry, you can't join. You wouldn't know any answers anyway, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, it's just really sad that uh, he he passed away this year. Um, Yeah, so recently, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Do you know Sean Connery? He was the first James Bond. Bond. James Bond. Uh, He passed away, too. Yeah, 2020. It's a very... 
painful year for lots of people. Lots of sad things. And uh, when, whenever we have those celebrity deaths, it always kind of makes you sad too, especially if you were a fan. Alex Trebek, R.I.P. Sean Connery, R.I.P. Rest in peace, gentlemen. Thank you for entertaining us for so many years. And now that entertainment job is mine. And uh, speaking of entertainment, let's get into a song. It's time. Well, I can't really play a song for Alex Trebek. Uh, I don't have the Jeopardy theme song, but I can for Sean Connery. And we're going to go to one of uh, his famous movies, once again, James Bond. There have been many, many James Bond movies, and I'm going to play a song from them. Do you guys know Paul McCartney? Paul McCartney and Wings. Of course, Paul McCartney was first famous in the Beatles. Well, they have a great song, Paul McCartney and Wings, called Live and Let Die, which is, of course, from a James Bond movie. Not one with Sean Connery, but anyway, it's James Bond. So enjoy the song, and I'll be right back. Copyright Restricted. Great song, great song. I'm, you know, I really liked a lot of the music from the Beatles, uh, but Paul McCartney and Wings, ah, eh, it's just okay. But that is a great song. So thank you very much, Sir Paul McCartney. That's what we're supposed to call him. The next story I want to talk about is uh, art. It has to do with art, okay? And you know, there are amazing, beautiful art paintings and sculptures and murals and mosaics all around the world. Architecture, you know, just fantastic, amazing uh, artwork from all around the world. Every country, every country has something amazing. But in the past uh, several years, um, I just have to ask the question, what the heck is wrong in Spain. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar, but in Spain, there have been several uh, art restoration projects, and that means to restore art, art restoration, to restore art. And the idea is, for example, there was a 17th century painting of the Virgin Mary, the Virgin Mary, Mother Mary, supposedly the mother of Jesus, right? And uh, it was, it's a 500-year-old, you know, it's, it's uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's, what, 400 years old. Uh, and then there's another statue uh, at, a, at a church, um, and there's another painting of Jesus. <laughs> I'm just looking at the, the original painting. It's just absolutely horrible. It's this beautiful painting of Jesus. Uh, it looks like probably on a wall. And, you know, it's very old, so they paid an artist to come in and fix the painting, and it looks absolutely horrible. And it has a nickname. The Jesus Restoration is called the Monkey Christ. The Monkey Christ. Mm -hmm. And it looks absolutely horrible. The Mother Mary painting is... Absolutely horrible. I think originally, it's, I'm reading here, experts call for the regulation after the latest botched art restoration in Spain. Immaculate Conception painting by Murillo was reportedly cleaned by a furniture restorer. So there's a beautiful painting of Mary. Okay. And I don't know. It looks like a picture of a little girl, uh, not really a young woman. But anyway, it's a picture of Mary. Um, the title is Immaculate Conception. And the original painting is, is beautiful. It's a very, very nice picture. And then they show the step-by-step -step procedure on how they restored it. And you guys, it looks like I did it. It is absolutely horrible. The monkey Christ is worse. That's worse. But this Mother Mary, it just is completely destroyed. But wait, there's a new one. There's another one. This time it's not a painting. It's a sculpture. 
A disfigured carving in Palencia. Is it Palencia or Palencia? Another bungled, B-U-N-G-L-E-D, bungled art restoration. It looks like it's kind of a sculpture of a woman, the original, of a woman, and she's, you know, uh, it's outside a building, on the frame of the building, but it's a nice sculpture, nothing too detailed, but the guy who redid it, I don't know what what it is. It, it looks like it has Donald Trump hair. It looks like uh, uh, maybe the Elephant Man mask, if you guys know the Elephant Man. Uh, they call it the uh, uh, Potato Head. <laughs> Uh, but if you ask me, it actually looks more like Donald Trump. And, and and I should apologize to Donald Trump because he's actually better looking than this statue. And the statue is white, not orange. But oh my God, Spain, what the hell is going on in Spain? And of course, we have our expert <laughs> on Spain, Yuan Chao. Yuan Chao, how are you doing, Yuan Chao? Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Yuan Chao, you're not an expert on Spain, are you? Not exactly. No, but you lived there, right? Yes. And you've seen some of the beautiful architecture and paintings in Spain, yes? Yes, but they never do this kind of thing. Not Never no. this, right? Yes. What's I going on? What, I don't know. What's the problem? It's, I think it's fake. No, it's real. It's real. The, the uh, monkey Jesus... Um, was done in, in 2018. A woman by the name of Elias Garcia Martinez, uh, she was the original painter. And I can't read it. Can you can you see this? E-C-C-E, homo. Can you read that? No, it's not Spanish. Uh, it's, it's Latin then. It's probably Latin. Mm. Anyway, uh, a woman in the village, just a regular woman, Yuan Chao, she repainted it. And she just, she created, you know, monkey face. <laughs> it's horrible. And then a furniture, furniture, a guy who fixes furniture fixed another painting. And, and you know, you can see this pretty little girl. Uh, and, and now we've got this sculpture. Now, wait a minute. So I was wondering, what's the famous church in Spain? Oh, La Sagrada Familia. Yes. What city is that in? In Barcelona. In Barcelona. Have you been there? Have you seen it? Yes, I seen. I seen it a lot of times. Is it nice? Is it beautiful? Because it kind of looks ugly. It looks like this Donald Trump statue could no, go no. there. You can Google it. It's not not like Donald <laughs> Trump. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I think all of Spain would be angry at me if they heard me say that. <laughs> They're still building it, right? Yes, it's not so, finished. So Spain has all these amazing architects and artists. I just, I feel so terrible when I see these restoration projects. It's a restoration project <laughs> from hell. Yes. I think Satan has... It's crazy. Now. It's creepy, <laughs> right? <laughs> it looks like, doesn't it look like Donald Trump though? Uh, yeah, the, the hair. The hair, right? Looks like it. Yes. Yeah, a little bit like Donald Trump. Uh, anyway, uh, Yuan Chao. So, give me the give me the name of the church again, please. Uh, La Sagrada Familia. Sagrad, sag, Sagrada La Familia. La Sagrada Familia. La Sagrada Familia. La Sagrada de la Familia. Oh, I'm so terrible. My Spanish is really bad. Uh, do you recommend that we go and visit that place? Yes, it's a must go. Any, it's a must, it's a must go. Must visit. It's a must visit. I love it. Any other good places to check out in Spain? Uh, a lot of places. Uh, Barca Grill. Where is that? Uh, in, in Barcelona also. Also it's, in Barcelona. It's, uh, it's also uh, designed by Gaudi. Ah, it's designed by Gaudi. That's why it looks so yeah. weird. It's, 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 it's Gaudi. Mm -hmm. It's Gaudi things. It's Gaudi Mark of Barcelona. There you go. That's right. He uh, he definitely left his mark on Barcelona. Mm. Yuan Chao, thank you so much for joining me and, and helping me out there. You're welcome. Yuan Chao, I need to play a song. Do you have any uh, song requests by any chance? Judy. Judy? You mean like, hey, Jude, 
by the yeah, Beatles? Hey Jude. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love it. It's not Judy. It's Hey Jude. Yeah. Hey That's you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do my best to play Hey Jude for you. And I think I'll play another song right after that. What it's going to be, I don't know, but I hope that you enjoy. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm bringing you the facts. Hello, everybody. Long time no see. It's great to be back. I have missed you all I hope you're all healthy. We got COVID-19 just causing problems all over the world. Well, I'll tell you, Country Shane is safe. Family is safe. We're all healthy, and I hope you are too. It's time for a fact with Country Shane. I got a good one. The La Sagrada Familia. Yeah, that's that big church in Barcelona, Spain. That church is going to take longer to complete than the Egyptian pyramids. The Egyptian pyramids. Giza, right outside Cairo. They only took 20 years. But the La Sagrada Familia, I hope my pronunciation is okay, they started construction in 1882, and they hope to be finished in 2026. Oh my God. Welcome back, everybody. That was the Beatles with Hey Jude, followed by Queensryche with their uh, wonderful song, Silent Lucidity. Ooh, beautiful song. A little bit heavier, but some nice music anyway. I promise uh, when we go out, uh, we're going to have some, some happy songs, some poppy songs or something like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is uh, give you... A little taste of DDM VIP. In our DDM classes, we have a section called EVC. EVC. And it stands for Everyone's Vocab Challenge. Okay? And what I do is I give the members uh, five words or phrases. And these words or phrases were in the assignment. So we had a big assignment. And in that assignment... There were these five words or phrases. And I want the students to use each of those five words or phrases and make a new sentence. That sounds easy, but it can be difficult because I want the students to use those words and phrases the same way they were used in the story. Okay, um, so for example, in this, uh, and, and we're going to do one from DDM 680, the DDM 680 EVC podcast. Mm-hmm. And DDM 680 was about bears, big bad Bruins. The EVC challenge words were crackers, crackers, swatting, swatting, S-W-A-T-T-I-N-G, Backside, backside, B-A-C-K-S-I-D-E. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Great phrase. And then a phrasal verb, signed up for. Signed up for. Okay? So crackers, uh, I think a lot of people might think, you know, something you eat. Good, right? Swat, swatting. What does swatting mean? Well, it means to hit, to hit. Okay, especially with an open hand. Backside, ooh, backside can have lots of definitions, but in this case, in this story, backside means your butt, B-U-T-T. Right now, I'm sitting on my backside. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie is a phrase, everybody, and it means I'll tell you the truth. But the nuance is, this is very embarrassing. Not many people know, but I will tell you the truth. So that key word there was embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you the truth, even though it's embarrassing. And then finally, signed up for. 
that one's not too bad when you register, basically, okay? So I gave everybody an EVC quiz, and it was this. I hated camping. All I did was swat mosquitoes. So I went camping, but the only thing I did was, uh, was swat mosquitoes, kill mosquitoes. The next sentence. When I agreed to go camping with Coach Shane, I had no idea I was signing up for catching my own food and using rocks as a pillow. Oh, in this case, signing up for agreeing to do. So when I went camping with Coach Shane, I had no idea that I was actually agreeing to catch my own food and use stones, rocks as pillows. Oh my God, I had no idea that is what I was agreeing to. So you can sign up for school, you can sign up for class, but here in the EVC quiz, signing up for has more of a nuance of agreeing to do, agreeing to do. The next sentence, when I was a child, I had a tummy ache. My grandma always gave me crackers. Mm, yep, that's true. When I was a little baby and my tummy, my stomach was hurting, my grandma would give me crackers. And crackers are not sweet. They're salty. They're like salty, dry, thin pieces of bread, basically. But they're not bread. They're crackers. They're mm, delicious. They're good with soup and cheese and sausage. The next sentence, I fell pretty hard off my bike, but I landed on my backside, so nothing broke except my pride. <laughs> um, so in this case, I fell pretty hard. I was riding my bike and I fell. I fell off my bike, but I landed on my butt, and I have a big fat butt. So I was lucky. So nothing broke. I didn't break any bones. But I did break my pride. I was embarrassed. But fortunately, I landed on my butt. I landed on my backside. And the next sentence, the last sentence, I'm not going to lie. Doing all of the DDM VIP tasks is not easy. But after I finish everything, the feeling is excellent. Yeah, that's true. And this is what a student told me, a DDM VIP student. He said, oh my God, Coach Shane, there's so much to do. There's LTA, there's the EVC challenge, there's the EVC quiz, there's the dictation, there's the repeating, there's the live classes. Oh, there's so much to do. I'm not going to lie. I'm exhausted. I'm dead tired. It's not easy. It's really tough, but even though it's tough, even though it's not easy, after I finish, I feel excellent, and that's true. Yeah, there's a lot to do in DDM uh, VIP, that's for sure. So those were my sentences. Now we know the, the terms again, crackers, swatting, backside, I'm not going to lie, and signed up for. And now what I want to do is look at what my students wrote. Yeah, so uh, again, this is going back to DDM 680. And what I like to do is I like to choose three students. I call them my victims, three victims. And I'll fix their sentences. My first victim today is Hajime. And Hajime's got some bonus points, so we're going to use one of his bonus points um, again, uh, let me get my words out here so I can remember the words. So Hajime's first sentence is, I love, what are you using, French? Is that French or Spanish? I don't even know. Canapé, using crackers, uh, C-A-N-A-P-E. I don't know what that is. Toppings of sour cream and salmon are the best. Okay, good. So I, even though I don't know the word Hajime, I know that you are using cracker correctly because crackers are salty. They're like a bread. So salmon and sour cream, 
would be perfect on a cracker. So I love canapé, I'm guessing is the pronunciation. Uh, and I wouldn't say using cracker, I'd say with crackers. I love canapé with crackers. Next sentence. When I was a kid, I swatted a pig's backside very hard. The pig screamed. We would say squealed, S-Q-U-E-A-L-E-D. The pig squealed and ran away. Why did you do that, Hajime? Why did you do that? Great job. Uh, swatted and backside. Excellent. I ran after and mounted the pig like a horse. He's, he was rampaging around and trying to shake me off. It was kind of scary. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Good job. Yeah, it's embarrassing to say that a guy was scared. You're a national public servant, right? Once you signed up for Japan, you are obliged to work for the benefit of the people in the country. Yeah, that's great. Excellent usage on all of those expressions, Hajime. Very pleased. Great job. Keep it up. My next victim is Hejung. Hejung sentences are much shorter. I love to put crackers in the clam chowder when I have them. Great job. Yeah, clam chowder is a soup. And in soup, you can add crackers. They taste delicious. So I'm going to fix your sentence. I love to put crackers in clam chowder when I have it. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. Great job. Next one. The SWAT team broke into a criminal's house. No, hey Jung, I don't want SWAT. SWAT is what? Oh, it's a it's a it's a police. What does SWAT stand for? I gotta look that up. It's a police organization. I used to know. Special tactical SWAT stands for what? SWAT stands for special weapons and tactics. No, I don't want that SWAT, hey Jung. So that one's wrong, hey Jung. 100 percent wrong on that one. But that's okay. You can be wrong sometimes. The next one. A few years ago, I fell from the treadmill and I got some bruises on my backside. Okay, so as long as you mean your butt, that's fine. If you mean your actually your back, no. The back of your legs, we can say backside, yes. Your back, your shoulders, the back of your arms, we can say backside, yes. But in this story... Backside means butt, B-U-T-T, -T, and only the butt. So if that's what you meant, you're good. The next one, I'm not going to lie. Donald Trump caught coronavirus. Yeah, that's true. But are you embarrassed about that? Hmm. So maybe, maybe you are. If you are, that'll work too. And then finally, I am glad that I signed up for Coach Shane's DDM VIP. That makes me so happy. And I have to say, I've said this before, anytime a student uses DDM VIP in a sentence, even if the sentence is wrong, I'll tell you it's correct. So it's correct, but it's not. <laughs> well, once again, signed up for, yes, you can register. So I'm glad I registered for Coach Shane's class. Thank you so much. I am too. But, this is why EVC is difficult. This is why it's a challenge. You need to use signed up for as in agree to do work. So I'll fix your sentence, Hejung. Hejung might say this. When I registered for Coach Shane's DDM VIP, I had no idea I was signing up for not only dictation, but also writing sentences, doing quizzes, and making MP3 audios. That might be a better one. Okay? Great job, Hejung. Thank you so much. All right, my next victim. Uh, I'll do Alex. Alex. Alex, really short. If you thought Hejung was short, check out Alex. Sweet tastes, sweet taste differs cookies from crackers. Bingo. I liked it. Uh, sweetness is the difference between cookies and crackers. That's right. Cookies are sweet. Crackers are not. 
I'm not going to lie. Swatting her backside also could be dangerous. <laughs> Excellent job. Yeah, that's right. I'm not going to lie. I have to tell you, this is uh, kind of embarrassing, but it's kind of true. I'm not going to lie. Swatting her backside. Alex, whose backside are you swatting? Your wife? Even, you know, I, I'm married. I, got, I have a wife. My wife still doesn't like it if I swat her backside. She's stop it. Stop it. My wife can swat my backside no problem. And and women want equality. Come on, ladies, right? <clears throat> Your last sentence, Alex. I did not sign up for doing his job. That's actually excellent. So uh, let's say Alex is working at a university and he's got another guy that's working there. That guy gets sick. And then the boss says, Alex, you have to do your classes and you have to do the other guy's classes. Hey, I did not sign up for his job. Bingo. That's a great sentence. Excellent job. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do, let's do Eric. We're going to do Eric. Eric, uh, Eric, I believe, uh, is in Mexico. Coach Shane, here we go. I always drink my milk with a bunch of crackers. Okay, so this is an excellent example of where I think you might be confusing crackers and cookies. So crackers and milk, eh, that's, it's possible. But once again, crackers are salty. So crackers and Coca-Cola, crackers and 7-Up, crackers and Sprite, crackers and soda, crackers and water. That's a good combination. But crackers and milk, not so. Cookies and milk, yes. Next sentence. At the very first time I came to this city, I spent two days swatting cockroaches in my new apartment. Oh, my God. That's terrible. Great example. Hopefully no more cockroaches. The backside of a woman is not the most sexual uh, feature. I prefer her intellectual skills. Ooh, Eric. See, Eric's a smart guy. He likes smart women. So the butt, yeah, whatever. Uh, butts are important, right? Everybody needs to have a butt. <laughs> Good job, Eric. And the next one, but I'm not going to lie. Flaunting a healthy body is also important. Beautiful sentence. I'll tell you the truth, a little bit embarrassing. If you have a healthy body, be proud. Yeah, that's true. Good point. And then finally, Eric, when you get a job, you must be aware of what you are really signing up for. Exactly. Just because you get a job, sometimes you're surprised at the extra work or the special duties that you have to do. So, yeah, that's a fantastic example. Great job, Eric. Thank you all uh, for your, uh, your great sentences. And uh, it's time for a song. Uh, talking about backside, baby got back. Copyright restricted. Hey, everybody, let's do a couple of questions. I got a great question from Bo Zhang. Is this the Bo who's in my DDM VIP and Perf VIP? The question is up on YouTube on my Coach Chain's ESL channel. The question is, how can I pronounce our own? O-U-R-O-W-N. O-U-R-O-W-N. It's a great question. And the way we say it is our own, our own. So perfect pronunciation is our, just like one hour, two hour. However, in daily English, we usually shorten it to one syllable and say R, R, R. And then the word own, O-W-N, own, own. But that R is going to link in our own. Our own, our own, our own. That's how we say our own if we want to say it quickly. And you can probably hear my son. That's Mikey. Mikey, say our own. Um. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that, but that wasn't that good. <laughs> All right, next question. Luis Alberto Soruco Estrada. I hope my pronunciation was okay, Luis. 
Uh, you're awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm learning things. Can you teach me the correct pronunciation of hot dog? H O T D O G. Yeah, the American pronunciation hot. That's a short O. Ah, ah. Hot dog. That's an A W. Now, some Americans actually say hot dog like the same hot dog. Do you like to eat hot dogs? However, I'm going to say most Americans are going to say hot dog, hot dog. So it's a short O in hot and an A-W sound in dog. Now, I've got some videos on the Coach Chain's ESL channel that talk about the A-W pronunciation. If you can't find them, let me know. Maybe I should make a new one. Hot dog. The last time I had a hot dog, probably two years ago. Yeah, that's just my guess. Next, I got a comment from Umberto Pieroni. Uh, He was watching my live stream, and Umberto says, Did someone see a cat in the middle of the screen? (laughs) Yeah, my house is kind of chaos. So sometimes uh, behind me in my live stream, videos. You'll see cats. You might see my son. You heard my son, Mikey. Well, maybe you heard him uh, earlier. Yeah. So uh, he's uh, he's two and a half years old and he does not like to listen. My cats are, my goodness, how old are they? They're uh, about, t- well, at least 10 years old. No, nine years old. Oh yeah. They're getting old. Poor cats. Uh, but they're, they're healthy. They're happy. And one of them is fat. But yeah, you'll see my cats and you'll see my sons in my videos. That's for sure. You'll hear them too. I apologize. But hey, that's real life. Real life, right? (laughs) And ooh, another guy, Juan C. Sichateo or Telo, uh, gave me a message here. These are all on YouTube, by the way. Uh, I'd love to improve my speaking with your lessons. Please I sent you an email. Is it difficult to make it? Uh, Juan, thank you for the email. Um, I hope somebody responded to you. I hope so. Uh, you know, sometimes our, our people are slow. Sometimes we get we get a lot of email and maybe um, it got lost. Believe it or not, sometimes they go to spam, so that can happen. So everybody, if you if you want to try our lessons for free, uh, you can do that. Send us an email. Send me an email, but sometimes other guys will see it. Um, so uh, the email address is dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. I know it sounds long, but it's the name of the class, DDM. Daily, D-A-I-L-Y, daily, dictation, D-I-C-T-A-T-I-O-N, dictation, members, M-E-M-B-E-R-S, daily dictation members at gmail.com. Send us an email. If you do not hear from us, you know, send us an email saying, oh, give me the free lessons and we'll send them to you. If you do not hear from us in two days, send it again. Okay, something happened. It happens. Don't get mad at us. We love you. We love you. Uh, One more comment here, Shohran Nabavi. I hope my pronunciation was okay. Uh, You are an unbelievable teacher. I prefer you to all other teachers on YouTube, coach. Well, Shohran, thank you so much for that. Uh, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, I need to do lots more videos uh, on YouTube and more podcasts. I'm trying, guys. It's, It's really difficult. I got two little boys. A very uh, amazing wife. And uh, two crazy cats. And it's very cold. <laughs> but I'm doing my best. Thank you so much for the questions. Uh, and I'm going to answer another question that I saw on Facebook. When, Coach Shane, when do you go live? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Uh, when I can. Okay, so for example, this podcast i actually went live on november 13th but i'm answering i'm finishing it up today which is november 15th 
It's just time is my enemy. Time is my enemy. When I do go live, however, when I do plan to go live, I leave messages on Twitter and Facebook. Okay, Twitter and Facebook. I try to leave messages on, uh, what is it, Telegram. I try to leave messages on VK.com. Um, I try to leave messages on, on Weibo in China. But China's tough. I mean, right now I can't log in. I need help to log in. It's crazy. So I, I do my best here and there. But again, for sure, on Twitter and Facebook. So do you guys know where my, my Twitter ID pretty simple twitter.com slash coach shane i don't think it gets any more difficult than that let me just make sure <laughs> twitter home uh yeah twitter yes twitter.com slash coach shane okay and my facebook page is also really simple but i gotta open it up here what happened to it facebook yeah facebook.com slash e ESL Coach Shane. ESL, English as a second language. ESL Coach, C O A C H, Shane, S H A N E. Of course, it's all one word. Facebook.com slash ESL Coach Shane. Please follow me there, like the page. And on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash Coach Shane, C O A C H S H A N E. I would certainly appreciate it. Uh, that's pretty much going to do it for this podcast. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And of course, I'll be back hopefully sooner than later to make another podcast. I hope you can join me uh, like Yuan Chao did. And uh, yeah, <laughs> there's another guy that joined me. You're going to listen to him at the very end. It's kind of a funny uh, conversation. And because of him... Uh, we've got a special uh, song coming up. So for now, that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to this extra little recording. I was talking to my wife and somebody started talking to me. Enjoy it. And uh, we got one more song coming up at the end. Wife, can you hear me? Yes. That's Waka, not my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Good. Where are you from, Thank Waka? You. I'm from Yemen. From England? Uh, Yemen, Yemen. Not England. How come? Now, I'm from Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. KSA. Yeah. And what do you do in, in Saudi Arabia? What's your job? I'm a pharmacist. I'm on duty right now. <laughs> and you're studying English, too? Yeah, because I like know? your way. <laughs> what a what a great conversation with Waka. It's uh, so nice to meet you. And at the very end, uh, he says, yeah, because I like your way. I like your way. Oh, man, that makes me feel really happy. Thank you so much, Waka. You know, uh, people are busy. They got families. They got their jobs. You know, time to study English is uh, it's, it's sometimes really difficult to find time. But that you like my way, that makes me feel really happy so to take us out is a great song by a singer called peter frampton Ooh, baby i love your way every day yeah, yeah. yeah so anyway something like that baby i love your way enjoy the song and i'll see you in the lex mat that i'll see you in the next let's master english podcast together let's master English.